Hey, everybody. Hi. How are you? Hello. Okay. We're ready to go, are we? Okay. Uh, let me see here. Let me, uh, this is the uh, pop up show. Uh, so we're recording it and we've got it going out live on Facebook. Let me make sure. Last week we had a problem with it going live out on Facebook. How's that, Alex, you ask? Well, that was because I didn't set it, I set it for only me so nobody else could see it. But now everybody should be able to see it. Yep, yep. Uh, okay. So anyway, we'll, we'll see if this works. Anyway, let's, oh, look, a whole bunch of people waiting to come on here. Hold on. Here they come, here they come, here they come, here they come. Uh, Marjorie won't be making it today because she's got a bad stomach. No. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's. Or is she afraid Tony's showing up? Huh? Is she afraid Tony is showing up? Could be. Could be she's afraid Tony is showing up. What what was that about? Did those two have at it once? No, she just does I don't know. She just doesn't like him. I mean, <laughs> finds him annoying. I mean, as do we all, but we... we, we but I like him. What can I like say? Him. He's a nice enough guy. There's nothing wrong with him, you know. I didn't, I didn't have a problem. I, I thought it was odd. I thought maybe it was an inside joke or something I missed. No, no. It wasn't an inside joke. I mean, I wish it were, you know. But uh, anyway, hello to everybody. Uh, hello to Steve and hello to Andrew and hello to Charlie. And of course, my old friend Rick Sheckman. This is his last day of being, what, 64? That is correct. Yeah, oh, happy birthday. Tomorrow you are Medicare worthy. <laughs> well, apparently I told you, it kicked in on November 1st for some reason I don't know. They probably do it, you know, there, there's a certain, I don't know. And no doctor I go to takes it, so. <laughs> well, you know what I say about doctors who don't take it? Fuck them. Yeah, but I don't want Dr. Bombay. So, you know, but you don't have to get Dr. Bombay. I mean, like, for instance, uh, for my prostate uh, cancer, I had the best oncologist in New York City for prostate. The best. And he, he took it, you know. Of course, yeah. if you're a doctor and you're dealing with prostate cancer, you probably don't want to eliminate uh, <laughs> most of your clientele. <laughs> yeah, because that's most of your clients. But, uh, you know, you're not going to get Dr. Bombay. I mean, um, especially with the kind of stuff you're going to come down with. Uh, it's usually stuff that uh, I haven't found. Did I ever have a doctor that didn't take it? No, I didn't. You know, so. Uh, oh, here, well, here we go. Here's somebody who's just joining us. This is uh, um, oh, Mike, Mike, who is a, a friend of Shecky's who wrote me about, you know, Stuff. Hi, Mike. How are you? He's in Canada, right, Mike? Mike? I'm in Western Canada. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hi. Hi. Yeah. A pleasure to meet you. A great pleasure to meet you and be here. Yeah. And Scott Boddicker is joining us. Um, if he's there, turn turn on your uh, camera there, Scott. Can you hear us, Scott? Scott, can you hear us? Earth uh, he, I don't think he's ever, I don't know if he's ever used, I think he has, sure, he's used uh, Zoom before. Scott, are you there? Scott? Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, what shall I do? Oh, there's Scott. Oh, now we got a picture on him. Now all we got to do is he's connecting his audio. Let's hear it for Scott, ladies and gentlemen. He got <laughs> Come in! <laughs> it took forever! <laughs> Oh boy, I'm telling you. Um, you know, I've been going to. The, I went to the de dentist again today for another portion of doing my my implant. This time, all he did was about 20 minutes in taking care of the mold for my fake tooth. All right, and I'm getting tired of it. It's costing me more in cab fare back and forth than it is for the goddamn implant. Getting ridiculous. <laughs> oh, here's Len Frisco here. Let me bring him in. Boy, everybody's here today. Um, no, it's post Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's post Thanksgiving, yeah. Uh, and it's it's stay safe out there, everybody. It ain't getting any better now. We're we're up to what fifty six deaths in New York. Well, I sent you those things from NBC this morning of the COVID, and it's crazy. 
Yeah, uh, let me let me see here if I have it. The deaths by month, this month is the biggest month since May. The reason why it was so high back then was we had the New York factored in and New York wasn't ready for it. But the reason the deaths are lower now and uh, have every right to be is because um, it's, uh, it, it, we, we, we know how, a little better how to handle people who have this. But did you see the numbers on the non-fatal cases? Oh, well, here we go. It was crazy this, in November. Listen to this, folks. Uh, if you go to U.S. coronavirus cases by month, uh, March, 186,000, April, 883, then May, 723, June, 845,000, July, 1,926, September went down to t about 1,200, uh, excuse me, one, one point, excuse me, let me go back. July was 1,226,907. Uh, August was 1,479,000. September was 1,215,000. So you see it's dropping. October it went back up to 1,940,000. November, are you ready for this? 4,252,822. That's and that's really it. Who's reporting that? Not, you know. Yeah. yeah. So much winning. It, 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 so much for winning. Yeah. yeah. No, it's Trump. Eh? We were going to see so much winning under his terms. Oh, yeah. And, and it, this thing bad was numbers. Way like a bad cold. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it was supposed to end last February, if I remember him telling well, us. Around in the corner. And then, right? and then it would all be gone at Easter, right? We'd all be. Yeah. <laughs> By Easter, we'd be uh, having oh, a parade. Yeah. Remember Easter Sunday, we're all be at the house. Do you see all these people at the airports? Are they out of their fucking minds? Yes, they are. I put a thing up and I took it off because I, I put them up for a short time, but I, I hate always putting up some kind of little statement because it's always going to get all kinds of little nasty remarks in it. So I, I tend not to do it. Uh, and I put up a thing that said, you know, uh, not wearing a mask is like holding a gun to my head. You know, I mean, I'm in that age group where it's like holding a gun to my head. You may as well just shoot me because if you've got even, you say, well, I don't have COVID. Well, no, you may be, uh, what do you call it? Non, uh, what's the thing? when you're Asymptomatic. Asymptomatic. And if you're asymptomatic, you can pass it to someone else, but not even know you have it. That's why you wear a mask, folks. Don't assume you don't have it because you don't have symptoms. Why we should have testing available. Right. And Scott, you work. look like, uh, I haven't seen Scott in a while because he doesn't call the other show that much, but he's got COVID hair. Am I right? It, it, it looks like you haven't, you haven't cut it, have you, since the COVID thing started? But my thing was a Trump thing. I haven't cut it since the October before 2016, the 2016 election. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Four years ago. Well, I mean, uh, uh, the same thing was true of uh, Will Durst. Yeah. Who I was talking to the other day. Uh, he hasn't had his hair cut uh, because he said he wouldn't cut it till Trump was out of office. And I said, well, are you going to cut it now? And he says, not till he's out of office. Out of office no. <laughs> so we're, we're in full lockdown now. You say out of Santa office. Mine. You're in full I, I don't know if, in Santa Yeah, I don't know if you guys are talking about it. I just got them. But um, yeah, so Santa Clara County, if you travel 150 miles away from here, like you go down to LA, mm -hmm. you come back up, you're supposed to quarantine for 14 days. Boy. Wow. Boy. Well, San Francisco 49, as we're told, they can't play football at their stadium. Yeah, they're going to go to Arizona probably. Yeah. You know, I am, there are a couple of things that upset me. Okay. And one is I don't give a fuck about football. And these guys shouldn't be playing if they're giving each other the disease. It was so bad with one team. I don't know which one because I don't know. Oh, Denver. The well, they, didn't, quarterback they didn't have a quarterback. Yeah. 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 They had and look too. <laughs> I got to call and come and be the quarterback. That's how bad <laughs> off they were. Okay. Yeah, they get a grocery store backer, a bagger to play quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what, why even play it if you've got to play it under these limited circumstances, you know? I mean, money, I this man, it's it's all money. Money, is, money is the only answer to that question. Money, yeah, gambling, money, money, money. 
<clears throat> well, also the other thing that bothers me is when we saw all these people at the airport, what's the main reason they were at the airport? I'll give you an answer. The airplanes were flying. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if one visible. airline, if one airline had the nerve to say, you know, we don't want people flying at this time. We're not no. going to fly anybody. But no, not a They're not all And they were filling the center seat. They're yeah. not all going to do that, though. One, one airline can say that, and the good for them. But not every airline is going to follow. They just think it's more money for them. There's well, you know, I, I, I just it. think that I would like to see a little more patriotism where these people are concerned, you know? <laughs> the airline industry put out a PSA showing you how with the filtration in the planes and everything yeah. else, it's one of the safest places to be for COVID. Oh, really? I've yeah. seen- well, yeah, it's, it's Once you get in the plane. Uh, when, I, right. when, I, when I want to be sheltered from COVID, I'm taking an airplane. <laughs> Just roll down the window. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Some air circulating. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you notice L Len's trying to compete with Tony? Oh, was oh, hideous no. wallpaper? That isn't hideous <laughs> wallpaper. Though. That is nice wallpaper. That is what, that's what, uh, that's what Tony's mother was trying to do. <laughs> Sorry, kids. No, that, that's, 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 <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. That's nice wallpaper. I'm not a big wallpaper guy. We don't have wallpaper here. I, I put that up when I bought this house 20 years ago and, you know, it's my office. It's fine. Do you have wall, <laughs> wallpaper at your house? I used to. I don't have any wallpaper anymore. Really? Oh, okay. Where did you used to have Back it? Back in the 60s, we had wallpaper. In your bedroom? I'll bet. Yes. It was like kitty wallpaper? I can, find, I can find a picture of the wallpaper. I have it somewhere. See, here's the thing about Shane. <laughs> there's a big, right next to the room he's in, there's this nice, really big master bedroom. Oh, <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> but he still stays in the same room that he was raised in, right? That's well, my brother had this room first. Oh, I see. Okay. And then he moved Why? to the room Mom liked the him Because mom liked him best or what? <laughs> the reason that he had. No, he had enough of me. We were both in the same room. I see. Okay. But the, the point is... And he that, liked going to head shops and, and things. He, says, you he, know. Doesn't, he doesn't want the big room because it faces the street and there's noise out on the street. And that makes sense. And plus there's street lights. You never, well, you've been here at night. Yeah. There's street lights out in front and it's very bright and I don't need it. Right. Well, I slept in that room and it was very cozy and nice. Yeah, but there are more street lights now. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> uh, or like last night, this is 2 a.m. I look out. Oh, they picked up the recyclables. I better put them in because it's pouring. It's going to be pouring outside. Mm. So, you know, because I'm hearing the garbage trucks coming up and down the street. Let me ask you, though. Uh, you have school across the street. Is that a grade school or a middle school? It's now, it used to be K through six. Now it's preschool through junior high school. Through junior high wow. school. So it's, it's preschool through, through eight. Because... My neighborhood is very orthodox now, and they don't send their kids to that school. When I went to that school, every one of us walked there. Mm -hmm. Are the orthodoxy, by the way, in your neighborhood wearing masks? Half and half. Yeah, okay. Because they've been- But they're the type who put it up if someone's coming near them, or they move across the street if they see someone coming towards them. So they've been very good. Did you walk up? And, this is not uh, like Williamsburg, where we have 7,000 of those people hugging, kissing, and whatever. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it, that was terrible. That was terrible. Walk, what, did, what? No, I was just going to say, did he walk to school in the snow, uphill both ways, the usual story? Yes, I did. <laughs> and I would come home for lunch. <laughs> okay, good. He <laughs> walked all the way to school. You know, you, you know something you and I have in common? I grew up across the street from my school on Telegraph wow. Hill. And that's also where I vote. So that's why it took me five minutes to vote in November. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he could have rolled out of bed, gone to school, you know. Yep, there's yeah. the school. There's a, a junior high right there. Right there? Uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. So There's a soccer field, so it's it's good. We don't but, get... But, it, but Adrian's not ready to go there. No, 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 no. But uh, <laughs> Stephanie goes there. Simon went there, now he goes to high school, so...
No, they don't go there. Now, they what's just, hard, what's harder, wait. being a parent of like Adrian, who's how old now? She's four, or five, 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 just turned five. And the other one is uh, the other one, the boy. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the, the older ones are harder right now because they're going through like, you know, I, I, I don't I, need to be here. That's I don't what, need to listen. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Right now, you're daddy, right? Yes. <laughs> Pretty soon, you're that piece of shit who lives with my mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, but luckily, it gets we get to a certain, certain point. She takes over, and the beatings begin. Oh so, really? Oh okay. Yeah. I, going- I don't see. See, I don't touch. I you know Simon and Stephanie are are mine, but they're not mine, right? But. But when I first met him, when I, I tickled Simon sometime, he peed his pants. So I found out that I shouldn't hit him. I should tickle him. So I said, you're going to do that or I'll tickle you. And I chase well, after no, him and no, I tickle no, him. Which one? He hates you? that worse than be, being beat. Which ones are your <laughs> kid? Which ones are your kids? Adrian. Adrian. Adrian is the only kid that's yours. <clears throat> By only in my lifetime. Yep. Yep. Correct. Only in your lifetime. And so your, your wife has had how many other kids? Then? Two. Simon and Stephanie. So she had the two. She's had three. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So when I met her, she, uh, Simon, and Stephanie were five and seven. So mm-hmm. now since Adrian's five, now I've seen the whole cycle. Yeah, <laughs> and you'd rather put up with Adrian than put up with the older ones. Yeah, so Adrian go- gets. Adrian's afraid of me, so that's the good thing. <laughs> Adrian's afraid of. <laughs> That'll me. change. He knows when I click. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, our, you know, uh, uh, I saw an interview with Barack Obama who said he was afraid of one of his daughters because she was just like, um, uh, what's her name? Yeah. Michelle. Michelle. Uh, and that the other one was more like him. So it was, he says, it's us against them. <laughs> I mean, are you afraid of any of your kids, uh, rather, you know, whether no. adopted, whether by marriage or not? No, 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 <laughs> not at all. Oh, okay. I have a tickling power. That is very powerful, man. I tell you. But she does the uh, the administering of the punishment, as it were. Yes, this weekend. Yes, it was interesting. Yes, so uh, who yeah. got who got spanked? Uh, Stephanie. Really? Yeah. How old is Stephanie? She's twelve, but her school is yeah. So she's it's just hard on school. You know, Simon's you doing really good in school, but si- Stephanie's having some problems. When you say spanking, what do you mean by spanking? Oh, no, she got, she got, yeah. Really? Oh. <laughs> yeah, because, because they, they, never, they, they, I, they're at that talk backstage. Whoever's yeah. had kids, they know that stage. I, you see, I've never had any kids, but I would have to tell you that my inclination would be not to do that. Okay. Uh, it, it's only happened a couple times, and yeah, that, that was a time. You know, uh, and uh, because uh, I don't know that it necessarily works. You know, uh, I worked that night. Oh, it did. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so, in other words, your wife has to really get mad to do. That. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna work all the way until the therapy. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah, short term. On the other end, you're gonna have to pay for the therapy. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna go to the therapist, saying that my dad tickled me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> be in court. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, maybe. I only tickle certain spots, but not the other spots. Uh, Mike, where are you exactly? Uh, I live in a place called Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. So if you know Vancouver, yeah, but it was named okay, after I'll, it was named after Jerry Kelowna, of course. <laughs> I thought I think it was the Jerry's only seven, a couple of people yeah. got that joke. Yeah. yeah, okay. Two of us got it. Oh, <laughs> nice place. See, All see, us old folks. Huh? See, Shecky, you're right. After a while, they just forget. You know, I mean, Jerry Colon at one time when I was growing up as a kid, he was a well-known comedian. Yeah. Right. And he was like, it always parodied in Warner Brothers cartoons. Right. 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 You know, Greetings Gate. um, Brian Neary, who's no spring chicken. I mean, he's not a kid. Does not remember Jerry Colonna. And uh, Scott, do you remember Jerry Colonna? I don't think so. Yeah. Leo? Alain, rather? No, I don't think so either. Really? How yeah, is he an East Coast guy? God, I'm old. No, he was Bob Hope's sidekick. I have to see a picture of him. Everybody know who Bob Hope was? <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. He, he was a golfer, was he? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let me see. I know the town. Jeff What's his last name? His last name? Uh, Colonna. C-O-L-O-N-A. Jerry Colonna. 
Yeah. yeah. That's spelled the same as Kelowna. He died in 86. Yeah. He was All responsible right, I, for the Kelowna virus. He's got, yeah, he's got, <laughs> he's got a big old mustache. He what? He had a big old mustache on him. He had a big a mustache. mustache. There was a band, mustache. and within a, he was a band singer, band player in the 30s, too. Yeah. Yeah. See, Chicken knows all that stuff. Shecky knows most stuff of stuff that what happened when he wasn't even born yet. And no one cares about. And no one cares about. <laughs> and someone has to remember them, and so therefore you take it upon yourself to do that. Well, you know, today I, I posted on Facebook a picture of the Paramount Theater, 44th and Broad and 7th Avenue, Rudy Valley, Burns and Allen in person. Really? And very small type. They mentioned what the movie was that was playing with. How them. many here know who Rudy Valley was? <laughs> I'm so old. Pointing. Huh? I know them all. Yeah. See. I don't know why. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um. But. It, uh, well, I always say to you, Ben. Page six. Do you know who any of these people are who are mentioned on page six in well, post? Well, no. Worse than that. I don't know any of the people that are mentioned on TMZ. Yeah, TMZ, yeah. I don't know either. Yeah. You know, I, I watch that just so I can know who they are. You know? And do you care? And, no. and then I can't remember their name because it's something with a dash and a question mark in their name or something. You know? or eight. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and I'm sure Charlie doesn't know any of this either, you know. And, I find and, that the, the stars these days are very generic. You know, you hear these names and you go, oh, yeah, I've heard Ryan Gosling or I've heard those names. I couldn't pick them out of a lineup. Well, what the problem is, is that we've attributed this term star a little too loosely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, shouldn't a star be somebody who's really... Harry Grant you should know. be a star. But when you hear somebody <clears throat> say, oh, I'm a porn star. Oh, <laughs> on. <laughs> You know, I mean, a porn star. I mean, are you uh, are you Linda Lovelace? No. Well, then you're not a porn star. Yeah. So some some comedian has a thing on his. Uh, I listen to Sirius, the, the comedy channels, and the guy he talks about those kind of words like genius. Also, oh, I hate that genius. Too. And some people, you know, he he brought vodka to the party. Oh my God, you're a genius! And grab the vodka. You know? It's like well, no. I've heard people go, oh, that person, that 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 comedian is a genius. And I go, well, yeah. that's going to be a real blow to Albert Einstein. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know? Speaking of about <laughs> business, like, oh yeah, there you go. Influencers yeah. and thought thought leaders, are, which normally are neither. Yeah. 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 But when we get to a point, no one's gonna remember who Robin Williams was in thirty yeah. years. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. Seinfeld or you know, pick a name. Yeah. I mean we well, are, Yeah. You can think about it in music. Who like, Carson like, kept people like, over seven. Mike Mike? You can think about it in terms of music. Um I'm a little bit younger. I'm I'm a Gen Xer, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh but my kids look at Pearl Jam the way that I used to look at the Rolling Stones growing up. They were my parents' band. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see that, um, mm. that generation gap take place with pop culture. And I think that pop culture um, has risen so vastly that that's where we really, really take that context now is, is, is the viewpoint that, that, you know, many people and maybe even in this room would think of Pearl Jam as, 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 a, as a newer act, but my kids look at them like they're just like the Rolling Stones. <laughs> my, my kids listen to anime Japanese music. Oh, or K-pop. Oh, sorry. That too, but yeah. See, I'm su surprised I even know what K-pop is. You know, but <laughs> I only know yeah. because of you, Alex. Really? <laughs> Did it work at that radio station, K-pop? No, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, it's it's Korean pop music, and it's you know they they do all the dances. They're basically boy bands. Anybody here know what K-pop is? You know, of course, Brian, because probably your kids. Yeah, like, yeah. And Tiffany shows me. Oh, you know, BTS. They broke the records for this, and they broke the records for that. And I'm like, yeah, but we had boy bands too, but they didn't have an internet like they do now. You know, so same thing. Well, what I used to do in the old days, I finally at some point in my life realized that this was a good thing to do. Uh, I would not date any woman who couldn't name all four Beatles. 
Well, well you wouldn't find any these days, I'm afraid. They would, <laughs> yeah. They would get uh, John, Paul, and Ringo, but very few of them got George. George. There's, uh, there's the Rose the Beetle, the Dung Beetle. <laughs> I, yeah, dung beetle. Yeah. Yeah. I, used to pull my, I used to pull my high school classes and I asked them, you know, can you name all four Beatles? And there was maybe one kid in a class that could name all four Beatles. Wow. Wow. So, you know, there, that but was broke, they broke up 52 years ago. I know. I mean, and, 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 and what I'm happy to say is that in spite of the fact that I enforced that rule, I still got laid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah just, how much did you enforce it, though? Come on. Huh? <laughs> it just didn't become your girlfriend. I'm sure. Well, yeah, I'm sure you kicked somebody out. From okay, it, we, got right? nothing, we got nothing but guys here, so this is a good guy discussion <laughs> okay. about how much would you put up with from a date before you wouldn't have sex with her. <laughs> if she you was know, a problem. like, like, let's say yeah. you're not with some woman, and she's a sure bet. Okay that you're going to nail her later on at night. Yes, I'm using the term nail because that's what we're talking about here. Uh, and yet, and yet, uh, she hasn't got a brain in her head. Now, my question is, what do you do at that point? Going for her. And th this isn't going to be on Facebook. Well, how many here, if she was really well, dirt you know, dumb, would still know. try to have sex with her? How many? Raise your hands. <laughs> Oh, dirt dumb? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah what, you know, I, I, I brain is better than evil brain. Than I bad couldn't do it. Yeah. I've, I've told the story before about the woman I was going out with, and uh, we went to Chinatown to have dinner, and then we were going to go back to my place, and it was a sure bet. It was just a sure bet. And as we're driving to, uh, to my place, uh, she starts going in on, and I'm going to use a word here, uh, th those niggers. Uh. <laughs> I can't stand those niggers. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, I have a moment here yeah. where I have to make some kind of judgment yeah. about whether it's more important to get laid or to sit here and hear the word nigger and not do something about it. I go home. <laughs> That's fine. <I'm>, <laughs> drop have, her off. How, how many here think I got rid of her and went home? You know, I'm going to say... Well, because uh, you've heard the story, right, Scott? <laughs> yeah. A couple of times. We were driving down the Bowery. Shecky knows what I'm talking about when I say the Bowery, so does Steve Ben. Oh, no, I remember that story. Yeah. And at that point, it was, you remember when it happened. Uh, at that point, I just went, I opened I think the door. You called and, me right after. And I told her to get out. After. I told her to get out of the car. <laughs> Good for you, Alex. Yeah. And now let me explain that the Bowery was the ba the, ba the way place where the bums stood around with rags at the intersection to yeah. wash your yeah. windows. <laughs> and so I let her out there. She was at the mercy of uh, the bums of, of the Bowery. I just said, out. I said, nobody uses that word in my car. Out. You should have, you should have found some black guys, too, and dropped her off right near those guys. <laughs> And I went home and I did the second best thing. So, you know, I mean. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the only times that I did, if I wasn't really, if I wasn't attracted to her, if she was like something that was not my type at all and she was trying to come on, I, I would not because, yeah. But. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it's amazing how much we would put up with, you know, like you're at dinner and she goes, so what do you do for a living? And she goes, well, I'm a, uh, I'm a waitress at a coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> If she said she was a waitress at some famous restaurant, that might be different, like a coffee shop. And then you've got to make small conversation about, gee, that must be an interesting job, because you're just trying to get laid, you know. <laughs> and then after you're through, you feel so guilty that you didn't live up to your ideals and to your intelligence, you know? Well, go on a cruise ship sometime. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Oh boy, you can't go on cruise ships anymore, can you? No. Well, I've got a couple booked. I probably won't go on them, but I got them booked. Yeah. Yeah, you get a great deal. You got, you know, five or six months down the line. Yeah. That's my favorite way to vacation. I've been on about 20 of them. I love it. Really? Me but, too. I love cruises. I love it. Shecky is the cruise master. I mean, he loves cruises. Uh, yeah. I can't stand being on a boat with a bunch of people and not being able to get off of it. You know, There's so much yeah, to do they drive you somewhere new every day. Yeah, yeah. right. You wake up, look out the window, 
and you're in a beautiful island, and it's, yeah, it's wonderful. Check you know, I've shown you that picture where we were in Odessa, Russia, or Ukraine, and you look out, and there's a McDonald's out your window with huh. a statue of Lenin in front of it. I mean, what, right. what's better than that? Yeah, well, what I'm saying is, like, Shecky um, takes a lot of great cruises. Part of the reason is he's single. He doesn't have a wife or kids <laughs> or anything like that. And then he has a, shall we say, comfortable amount of money. All right? And so he gives himself these gifts. Am, am I uh, explaining this correctly, Shecky? Yeah. This and plus, is now it's, I'm going to sound sexist, any woman you meet on a cruise ship, in theory, you never have to see again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back to that again. Uh, but uh, he uh, has taken some really interesting cruises. I mean, you took one to the Antarctica. Well, Antarctica was I would, last week. I would take that to go see the penguins, okay? And they uh, smell. <laughs> and they smell. That, that's what we found out about it. Uh, but he also has been to the, I remember you went to- Well, China, uh, the Yangtze. You went you to know. the Yangtze. Tell him who was on board with you. Alex Trebek. And, and Shecky gave him pancreatic cancer. And he was he was lovely, but his family was lovelier. Really? Wow. Yeah. And it's cool. just I'm trying to figure out when can I start dating his wife because she was a lovely one. <laughs> I hear she's available now. I believe she is. <laughs> Too she's soon. Much younger. <laughs> But Even though they were married for like thirty some odd years. But you know, if I were uh, if if I were in Shecky's situation, uh, in fact, right now, I mean, I I thought about, hey, Marjorie and I, you know, how 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 much long, how much money do we have to save? You know, am I going to live to be a hundred? Okay, then maybe I don't have enough money to live to be a hundred. Well, right. if you ever have to start paying rent again, yeah, yeah, well, that that could start <laughs> eating it up too, but not not terribly, you know. I mean, we still have a lot to subsist on, all right? But, uh, and I'll come knocking on your door if I need room and board. Oh. And who are you going to leave your money to when, and I'm the same way, when you've saved it until you're dead? Yeah. Let me give you my, let me give you my address. It's, uh... <laughs> well, no, but that's a good question, Checky, especially where you don't have any children. So you're not. Right. And my brother like has more money than God. So. Yeah. And your brother doesn't need it. Uh, and uh, so uh, here, a whole bunch of people are ready, ready and willing to take it off your hands. Well, going back to the Letterman days, I was going to leave it to all of the Letterman staffers who had kids that were in their teens who were going to college. Guess what? They're all out of college now. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know. But, I mean, the point is that, that uh, um, you know, you you you've gone taking some very good cruises in your time. Yes, to the Galapagos, the Peruvian oh, that's Amazon one I cruise, would take. huh? Oh. The Peruvian Amazon, Galapagos. Oh. Yeah. you know. Oh. Yeah. So see, he he does the really the really good ones. He doesn't. Yeah, make, you know, it's not occasionally he'll slum and go take a princess or something like that. You know. No, I'll take a Caribbean, but then I that's what I call deck chair cocktail. Headphone book. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. And I barely get off the boat. Do you like it? Because, very interesting. Do you like it because it's enforced relaxation? I don't find it enforced, and I barely go to the dining room because I don't want to sit there for two hours with very nice people. But and what did you do today? Yeah. Oh, we went to that. It's like. Now I'll just go to the buffet and fill up my plate with something for 10 minutes and go home. Oh, here's Steve. He's joining us. Steve is uh, in his truck going somewhere. Who knows where? Where are you going, Steve? Steve, you need your audio up. Well, when he's able to... Oh, there he goes. Uh, Steve? Hi. Where are you right now? Where, where, what part of the United States are you? Ohio. What? Ohio. Ohio? Ohio, did you say? Nevada. Ne oh, Nevada. 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 Okay. Oh, okay. It looked like there, you know, the sun was shining through on his face so much. It looked like he was wearing a mask 
And I'm, yeah. I was about ready to say, why are you wearing, wearing a mask in the cab of your truck? You know. he, he picked up a girl at the truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you there. going? Where are you going? If you're in Nevada, you must be, are you going to California? Yeah, I'm going to Fresno. Okay, well, you know, you got to be safe there. Be really safe. It's, it's uh, well, Brian isn't here right now, but uh, let's see here. Who else is in California? I guess nobody here is in California. Right? Oh, you are. You are, yes. Uh, Len, and you're, you're where again? You're in the Southern California, right? No, 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 east of San Francisco, Livermore. Oh, Livermore. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So in Livermore, uh, how is it going? Pretty bad, right? Uh, yeah, they've shut everything back down. No more indoor or outdoor dining. It's just uh, takeout. And, you know, it's uh, it's going back the wrong way. <laughs> we haven't closed down dining because our governor says that dining doesn't seem to be a spreader. Crazy. He, he says the biggest spreader of family gatherings now. Yeah. Yeah. I believe um, that. You know. Uh, we just had a whole bunch of those. I mean, yeah, it's kind of, you're going to see a spike here in the next week. You've sure. gone from my family's killing me to my family is killing me. <laughs> you know, yeah. people p post pictures on Facebook too of all their families coming yeah. from out of town and, and yep. grandparents are there. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, you're nuts. How about you, Scott? What are you doing there in Texas? I know that you and Charlie both are in Texas right now. What have you done to kind of keep yourself safe? Just not gone out or what? I think it's pretty, uh, I go out a bunch. I mean, I go to Home Depot, but I have my mask on. I feel safe. I stay away from people in the Home Depot and been doing a lot of, uh, you know, home repair stuff. So I go there a lot now, but. Let me ask, anyway, let me ask Brian, ask, let me ask Brian this because he, he's the best expert. I know the closest thing to an expert that I know. He's not an expert, but he will tell you that. Only on GabNet. No, but, but, no, but you know about the lay of the land. How much protection is a mask against someone else who isn't wearing one? Oh, well, yeah, I, I stay away from those people for sure. Yeah. I don't see many of those out, no. You know what I do when I see them? Put my hand yeah. over my... Yeah, but same as Scott. I, I go to Home Depot and, and run errands and stuff like that. But yeah, most of the people, I, I still stay away from around the, yeah, if people are walking through, I'll let them walk through first and then I'll go in after them and stuff like that. I still stay six feet away, even if we both have masks. I mean, yeah. you know, what's it going to hurt? Yeah, uh, because... Uh, but but I, think, I think the big problem is like those people that are having people over and they're coming from a different area, you know, and especially if they're coming from up LA, like we're going to go down to LA this weekend. I'm glad we did it because you have whole different families coming in from different areas from there. And that's really bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're not going to, uh, you know, you're not going to ask somebody in your family, hey, uh, you traveled all the way from Chicago and now put a mask on. Yeah. You know, you're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, how's it going up there, Mike, in Canada? I mean, are you guys? Uh... Yeah, like we're, we're, um, the province I'm in is in a, we're in the stage right before lockdown again. We locked down pretty hard uh, in March and April and then kind of came back. Our cases weren't um, over the top, which is good. But I mean, it's still in my city. Like a good good friend of mine, he and his entire family of five got it and it ravaged them pretty good, but they're on the other side of it now. Um, we're not quite locked down, but I wear my mask every time I get out of my vehicle to go into an indoor space. Yeah. Uh, but we still do have indoor dining. Yeah. Um, is it 100% indoor dining or is it limited indoor dining? Oh, the well, no. See, we haven't. Our um, our Cuomo, <laughs> where where we are, who has the the daily yeah. uh, broadcasts, and they talk about that. Um, they changed at the very beginning the rules for restaurants for when, and they had phases when we were going to go back. Phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. Phase four is back to kind of normal again. Yeah. We made it up to phase. Phase three included restaurants, yeah. indoor uh, capacity cut by 50%. Okay. And we never got out of that. Wow. So when you go to your favorite restaurant, even if they still have indoor dining, it's 50% of what could normally be 
what the restaurant could hold. I'm not a big uh, outdoor dining guy. Never have been. You know, like when they say, do you want a table outside? Or do you like a table inside? I go, give me inside. But now it's always outside. Uh, you know, I'm not going to take a chance inside. I'm sorry. It's getting cold now, though. Jeez. Well, yeah, but you know, you know what a lot of the uh, restaurants are putting up are those heat lamps, those heat things. Yeah, and they're putting up walled uh, tents, which is going to be inside. Just like <laughs> inside. Well, you, you don't want the walled tents. That's a stupid idea. Well, they're doing it out here. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, they're doing it here. Santana Row, they have... They have the, the, the driveway area that where people drive there. They have it all blocked off, and it was nice in the summertime. Yeah. Those nice big white tents. And now I saw this weekend they put wall up around, like a curtain yep. around the whole thing except the for way, one side. By the way, let me get this off my chest. Uh, I came across real stupid yesterday. <laughs> uh, a, about a month ago, about less than a month ago, two weeks ago, I bought a new Roku because the old one was kind of going bad. And so I bought a new Roku. All right, 99 bucks. Now, yesterday, I'm looking at uh, Amazon, where I bought it from, and the price has gone down to 69. <laughs> In the old days, what would you have done if that had happened? Jackie, I'll Make leave it to you. Make a phone call. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, we don't do that anymore. Ooh. We don't match the price. Really? They said, she said, but let me talk to my people. So she talked to your people. Come back. I can't do anything about it. What they suggest is that- But you could return it until January. Exactly <laughs> what they suggested. Why don't, you, why don't you just return it and then buy a new one at the lower price? Oh now, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because I spent three hours setting up my, that new Roku for all the subscriptions and all the stuff, you know, and putting everything where I want it to be so Marjorie would know where it was, so on. And uh, I said to them, I said, you know, this is idiotic if you think about it. I said, why? I said, okay, so I send it back to you as a return. You can't sell it again as new. So you're going to take a beating on it to begin with of at least $30, okay? Uh, and it would just be just as easy for you to give me the $30 than for me to send the thing back and you have to take the loss on the item. Yeah. yeah. And she said, well, that makes sense, but I have nothing to do with it. They, <laughs> they don't have a process. They don't have a process for that. Nope. Yeah. Somebody in a room. And I said, to them, I said, how many people are going to do this and how many people aren't going to do it? And they know that certain people will go through the trouble of sending that sucker back, but mm -hmm. they know that it's only going to be a certain percentage and it's probably a very small percentage. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, in the old days, you didn't even have to breathe heavy before you got the whole story out of your mouth. You know, they said, okay, we'll send you the 30 bucks. There was never, Listen, Alex, I, I, I got to take off. It was really nice talking to you guys. I'll talk to you next week. Oh, okay. Bye, Please guys. come back again yeah. next week. Okay. Say goodbye to Len. Goodbye. Len. Nice Stay paper. Safe. I was just joking. Len. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, hey, Alex, can I ask a question quick? Yeah, sure. How, how do you know when your Roku is not going is going bad. I mean, I got one. I, I don't like it, but it still works fine. But I mean, it seems well, to eat. You know, it's going bad when it tries to screw your Apple TV. So, uh, you know, or or tries to steal from your Apple TV. You know, it's going bad. Oh, uh, it just it was getting slow. It it happened to be a model I think that wasn't a particularly good model. I just got a new one, and it's faster and it's got oh. a better Wi-Fi. Well, that the ultra you got. Is that too much? Okay. Okay. It's the same model. It's the same model, basically, but it's got all the new stuff in it. Okay. And 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 it works. It's very fast. And the okay. Wi-Fi, it just takes Wi-Fi from anywhere in the house. You know. Okay. So it's 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 really very good. Their stick is very good. Their stick uh, it picks up all the Wi-Fi points around the house and has a fast throughput. But uh, the old one was just terrible. It took forever to start, and it was I. So, oh, I okay. you know, uh, that was really I, I just didn't know. I didn't, yeah. Huh? I, I, I just want to make sure because, you know, sometimes it does delay starting up and, you know, but I can wait the 10 if, seconds. If you bought a new one, you would see it was fast. Okay. And it also is cleaner. It looks cleaner on the screen and everything. Well, I think the new one came out like in October, the new Ultra. 
the, the new ultra. Yeah, this one goes. The ultra has been the top of the line for forever, but it's not the same machine. You know, what is that that's rolling around? Is that the coronavirus there, Andrew? Yeah, I accidentally pushed the button. <laughs> no, don't don't get too close to it. Okay, yes, it's, uh, it's, Jeffrey. It's multiplying. I've got two recommendations for how to get your stuff back that's broken. All right. First of all, you call the supervisor when that knucklehead is on the phone. They give me the supervisor. Oh, no, they turned me over to the supervisor. They turned me over to the supervisor, and she said the same thing. I can't do anything about it. That's our It problem. didn't go bad. They just have it for a lower price now. Yes, but if I send it back saying, okay, I return it for whatever reason, which they'll take it, then they can't resell it as brand new which means they're going to have to take a beating on it, which means it'd be easier if they just gave me the $30. Well, to, be, to be clear, Alex, they don't take a beating on it. They charge it back to the supplier. Oh. So oh. That's yeah. how it's just like if you, if well, you, if you all sell All I Costco, know is things, there's something rotten at Amazon, okay? Yeah. It used to be that you didn't have to go through that. Yeah. Yeah. He's made $80 billion since the pandemic started. Exactly. Yeah, shut him down. <laughs> You think you can afford to be a lousy 30, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Go hard, <laughs> man. So. So Go hard, man. In a, huh? What? My customer said. Go hard, man. In about six years, that Jeff Bezos will be the first uh, trillionaire in the world. Yeah. Mm. Really? Yeah, well. Yeah. I would have hung up and called back and got someone else on the I did. I did. I called back, Marjorie said, I'd call back. So I called back and then I got this woman and I said, is there somebody else I can talk to? And she passed me over to another person after I had to listen to that dopey music that they had. They, for a billion trillion gazillion <laughs> dollar company, the fact that they can't afford more than one song for the last 10 years <laughs> when they put you on hold just absolutely blows my mind. Especially you know, since Amazon sells music. <laughs> you know, when you call Apple, they, they give you a choice. You can pick what kind of music you want to listen to while you're on hold. Well, who, who, <laughs> Apple, who yeah, Apple, yes, they do, Apple give, yeah. they do give you a choice. Yeah. yeah, but it's, you know, Amazon has gotten so big for its britches, it doesn't care about its brand anymore because they've bought privilege to prevent anyone from competing with them. Yeah, because I, I started to think, well, what is my alternative? Yep. to Amazon. And there isn't one. There are several for various functions. Like if I want pants, I can go online to the Gap. And if I want uh, electronics, I guess I can go to Newegg or whatever. But, but you could buy from Roku directly, but you won't have it the next day or two days later. That's right. Yeah. Actually, they said, I, I think, did, did I or did I order? I think, I, think I ordered something from Apple and it came uh, from Roku and it came very fast. Yeah. It came very fast. Yeah. It's what happens. But I, but I don't like Roku forward. because they don't have uh, HBO Max. They're still in that pissing match with HBO Max. They will eventually. You can yes, eventually. It. But right now, you know, like Marjorie hates using the Apple TV. She doesn't like the remote they have, which is a dopey remote. I'll, I'll oh, it's a horrible remote. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have it here because I want to get a, I get, get HBO Max on it. And anytime I want to watch any HBO show that's on now, I have to go over to my Apple TV. I can't get it on my Roku. And what's that all about? I'll you know, you money. The, I'll send you the link to sideload it. <laughs> okay, do that. I would like I'll to see how I you sideload it, it. I did it on my Fire Sticks before. Now it's available, so I had to. It automatically converted. The, yeah. But I mean, I, uh, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't need that. I want my, my, my HBO Max because, and actually, HBO Max is better than HBO was. I mean, it's got so much more. You know, for the same price. You, if you got a cable company that's, you know, that you're getting HBO from, you get HBO Max uh, for, for free. Not for free, but you get it as part of the package. You know. Yeah, but that's. For free in that sense. Yeah, but it's it's got everything. It's you know. Um, um, so Mike, what do you do up in uh, Canada? What what besides try to stay warm? Well, um, I was uh, I'll be as quick 
quick as I can, I basically have had three jobs my whole life. The first one was I worked for Costco Wholesale. I was under the, uh, under the leadership of the baby boomers who said, get a good job with good benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that at 19, hit the glass ceiling around 27, 28. So I started a financial firm on the side, um, built that business because I realized that entrepreneurism is, is the only way to kind of really get ahead. Um, so I built that. And, uh, but my, my, my love is broadcasting. And so after I left Costco and now my financial firm has kind of branched out a little bit and don't get me wrong, I'm not anywhere near where I could be, but broadcasting is it. So my wife is building a men's mental health app and I run the podcast for that. And I basically at about 38, 39 years old realized that that's where my passion is. And so, um, I've had a, a career in marketing that was with Costco financial services and now I'm moving into communication. Now my, my question to you is uh, yes, sir. Where, where broadcasting is concerned, it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I know. It's the wild, wild west, isn't it? No, it um, isn't the wild, wild west. It's kind of like the bad part of Detroit. <laughs> yeah. And it could be like, it, that, 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 that could be apt, but for a guy like me, um, who, who didn't even really come to the realization that I, that was where my passion lay yeah. until later in life. It's now easier to at least scratch that itch than it's ever been in the, in, in the entirety of, 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 of the medium. Yeah. And so I can, anybody can start a podcast. Well, podcasting is, it's different than broadcasting. When you say broadcasting, it means you got to go somewhere where there's this transmitter and then you do your show over the transmitter. That's broadcasting. But you don't think that people who uh, like are on Twitch, for example, are broadcasters? No. As a matter okay. of fact, there was a term for it, which they don't use very often. They use podcasts, they use whatever. Narrowcasting was the term that was used. Narrowcasting. And they don't right. like to be thought of as narrowcasters, but they are. I I view broadcasting more in the in the sense of in the way I was using the word and, and I'm happy to be corrected yeah. uh, is 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 somebody who is talking and 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 uh, expressing themselves it, it, uh, yeah. through I medium. Use, I use the older version of it. Okay, I got mainly you. because I was in broadcasting. I my whole career, as Shecky knows, was broadcasting. Yes, sir. You know, and now I'm doing a podcast in which I fight for a, the small number of people I can get to listen to it and compete with two other two million other people. You yes. Know, so it's not exactly broadcasting. Right, Jackie? Yeah. Yeah, you know. Uh, so You're not a good guy anymore. <laughs> the day, there was a day I had to say to myself, I'm not in broadcasting anymore. And I think that, I said that when I first, when I started, when I was on series. You know, I said, I'm not in broadcasting anymore. I'm on a satellite. So you would even consider Sirius not broad. So what Howard Stern is doing right now technically still is not broadcasting. It's not broadcasting. Definitely no. the word. Okay. I feel you. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that makes it closer is his transmitter is a satellite. But it still is a different animal. And you got to play it as a different animal. And way. you have to pay for it. And you have to pay for it, too. You have to pay for it. So... It's, you know, it's not the radio that Shecky and I were brought up on or that Steve and I were brought up on or that Charlie and I were brought up on or that Scott and I were brought up on or anybody that's here, actually, you know. Myself included. Half of my life was spent without the Internet. I'm, I'm right on that bubble now where half, I, half my life was pre-Internet and half my life is post-Internet. So it's an, it's an interesting perspective, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I embraced the internet the day I saw it, you know, and that was back in before 19, before 2000. In fact, uh, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I did the first podcast ever. And I invented the, uh, I and another guy invented the form. He came up with the technology. We had a program and I would put my show online on my site. And then that program every day would go to the site. And if it saw there was a new program, it would immediately download it to the person's machine. The podcast. What is that? It's a, That's a podcast. What is that next to, uh, look at that, look at that. That's, that's kind of like, where's Waldo? Mm -hmm. Where's Adrian? 
Oh, no. <laughs> oh, there she is. No. <laughs> she, she she never does that. Only those are with you guys. <laughs> really? I say hello. Why do the kids do that? Why do they suddenly realize that's something funny? This yeah. is funny. That's right. <laughs> what is that, Shecky? Who did that? You got me for a moment. It, it, it was Harpo Marx's Googie. It's going to say oh, Googie. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a real Googie. So did you see last night <laughs> PCM ran his first film? Whose first okay. film? Harpo. Yeah. First film? 1925. Mm, a silent film that he was in? <laughs> okay. Too Many Kisses starring Richard Dix. Now, I say, how could he be in a silent film? And then I suddenly realized he never said anything in the films to begin with. <laughs> no, but he, talks, but he talks in the film through intertitles. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't know. That's funny. Yeah, it played last night, but I have a Blu-ray of it coming. Maybe only, today or tomorrow. Only Shecky would know that. See? Mm. That's why I... Good. Why I admire Shecky. Victoria while they were working on Broadway. Wow. Mm. Okay. Yes, Brian. I want, I want to ask Jeff. I, I, I've been watching that. There's a there's something on a TNT or something like that. It's the murder of Middle. Yeah. The Myrtle of Middle. Middle, Middle mm. Island, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And this, I think it's in Connecticut. Is that right, Scott? They say it's in I, Connecticut. I just saw the title the other day. Yeah. yeah. It's just murder that was in connecticut i think and uh she was yeah she was put around the side of the house and uh that the, the the son is doing a documentary on it it's like the third episode mm -hmm. oh okay yeah, I didn't did know anyone I watch the final episode of fargo last night no but i'm going to so oh. don't tell me about it, it was a yeah, good they all die at the end stay oh, yeah. through the credits <laughs> they what Stay through the credits. Stay through the credits. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Because there's a callback to season two in the credits. Oh, is that how they link it together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Enough said, you know. I think it's been very good this year. Oh, it's a very yeah. good season. You know. And, and Chris Rock. There's something like last time when I'm watching it, I'm about to do my usual click and I'm done. And just because... Fine, they're running the credits, and then all of a sudden there was like a, like a Marvel movie, you know, that thirty or forty second coda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, all right, okay. Uh, I've got it. I've got. Which even I didn't realize was a callback, yeah. but I read an interview with the executive producer who said, "Oh, no, that was a callback to season two. Oh, okay, all right, all right. And also, if anybody watches The Mandalorian, they finally came up uh, with a name. For the for the baby. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna wait till the whole season's over and watch it in the infamous one fell swoop. Yeah. What what's the name, Mike? I keep forgetting. It's Grogu. 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 Yeah. 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 I'm a gigantic Star Wars fan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm big. I'm a big Baby Yoda fan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> David Prowse died of COVID. He died of COVID. No. He was 85, so okay, he had a good life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, they I, did did, I, I, I did an interview with him when I was at Sirius XM. I had uh, the guy did Chewbacca, and I had uh, him on, and uh, uh, that was it. I didn't, I don't think, no, I didn't have the guy who did three CPO. Hey, listen, I just looked, and we're running out of time. This has been, I love this show. I, yeah. You know, and I, take, I, do, this, did I do this every day. Except, today. It, it, I do this every day, except uh, uh, this, uh, instead of the other one. But then I say, if I did that, this may become as bad as the night show, you know, I, because people would be drawn to it. Uh, they still have the night show. So I prefer doing this once a week and just looking forward to it and looking forward to talking to Rick Sheckman, to Steve. Yes, Bender. but there was no politics today for a change. Oh, basically, no. At all. No Andrew Deutsch. I mean, no Andrew Deutsch. Andrew <laughs> Deutsch. Uh, you had me saying no. Uh, Charlie Wallace, Mike Chisholm. Mike, call us back again, please. Please. Genuine pleasure. Absolutely. Scott Boddicker, you're always welcome here. Brian Neary, Jeff Stein, and Steve down there. I uh, uh, want to hear from you, too. You've been very quiet today, Steve Bender, but that's okay. 
Yeah. All right. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, no. Uh, you know, and you, many times you have stuff to say, and you're really very important to the show. Okay. Anyway, thanks to everybody, and thanks to the people who are uh, who are watching us. Uh, and everybody, give a big wave goodbye. Okay, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, yeah.